Hi and welcome to another tutorial from the Golden Ribbon. Today we're looking at the Bucket Fill Tool. tool. And the Bucket Fill Tool is 5 tools from the, from the bottom on the toolbox and 17 tools from the top. The shortcut to activate the Bucket Fill Tool is Shift plus F7. So the Bucket Fill Tool was created for illustrators and cartoonists. It uses the same technology that we would find in a raster program to determine the boundaries to fill in an area. So it doesn't use um, the vector elements to determine, you know, the algorithm doesn't use vector elements to determine a area to fill in. It uses pixels and the pixels from the screen. So the contrast between areas is important when dealing with this bucket tool. Black and white works well for the fill areas but you can also feel based on other criteria and we're going to go into that as well as such the bucket tool tool has the unique ability to fill in an area based on uh, um, using a jpeg as well as a png as well as a vector object or path and for the most part the path object pixel um, image area should be bounded for the best results but in case you have small gaps you know we're going to show you how you can utilize the tool to amend for those small gaps okay so let's get straight into it the bucket tool we're just going to click it activate it we see we have a bucket right here and we have paint coming out the bucket and that tip where the paint comes out the bucket is the area is the tip that will do the searching that's the center point of this of this um, icon these images that I have here are pixel images they are not vector that's uh, one of a sunflower and we've got the RGB channels here and what we're going to do here is we're going to RGB channel images both of these are pixels so we're going to demonstrate how this works you know we have to set a color let's get an object and just set a color let's use this red right here and then set the the um, paint bucket tool and we're going to fill in and we can see that as we click in the middle of the sunflower we have gotten a, a fill and the fill was based on the pixels that he was able to determine from the zoom state that I was in so right here so naturally because we're using pixels on the screen the closer that we zoom in you know the more accurate the fill so because we were zoomed out we had a lot of space around the edge and let's try and see zoom in and see if we get a better result here to give you an understanding of the technology we're using here and we can see automatically we have a better fit right here a more rounded circle you know than when we had when we zoomed out so zoom is an important factor in this tool's function and you may want to consider this when filling in shapes that zooming in gives you a more accurate zoom and zooming out gives you you know a less accurate zoom but a more organic feel and this can be done for any area of contrast so right here we can fill in for this area too which is the sunflower part and we can see that zoomed out we get these sort of um, jagged edges if we zoom in now right it's far more accurate of a zoom far more accurate of a zoom so the bucket tools function exists in that space now there are certain tools that we can use to change what we how we, how the algorithm selects um, using the contrast of pixels and we have tools that will help us you know to fill in gaps and spaces uh, when we have a scenario where the bucket fill tool doesn't do as best a job as we want to and that's what the tool sets are separated into the last tool set is to reset the paint bucket perimeters you know in case that you you know you've gone into a lot of editing and the paint bucket tool begins to sort of um, 
the, the results become unpredictable you can set it back to default and start from the beginning to get the more predict to get the results to be predictable once again so the first option that we have in the bucket tool option um, oh and just before I go into the options we can also fill in an area with the with the paint bucket tool um, simply by getting the paint bucket and drawing left click and holding and we see this red line and this line enables us to fill in the shape with the color that's selected you know and we're not filling in the shape it's creating a new object and that's the next point also when you use the paint bucket tool it's not filling in the shape any at all it's creating a new object based on the boundaries of the shape that it detects via the pixels on the screen so if we select this one and move it down we see that we still have the original shape and we have this trace of what the shape would be based on the pixels on the screen and so we have this sort of purple circle here based on the color that we had before and it is if you hold alt you know let's give this a stroke just to demonstrate if we hold alt you know why we fill this in it will also fill in the, the stroke no not if we hold alt if we don't hold alt why we fill this in this will fill in the stroke as well and we can see that we have a stroke fill as well you know if we hold alt it's not supposed to fill in the stroke any at all but we still have a stroke fill here um, not quite sure why but for now let's just try it one last time because I know the paint tool can be the paint bucket can be a little bit iffy fill in green and hold alt still fills in with green don't see much of an outline that's fair enough but the alt um, is supposed to also be able to fill in areas across fill in more than one object across its line radius so we're going to test that too so if we drag all of our is these supposed to get these both of these supposed to be green right so it will drag over multiple objects also to create the fill and we see that we have the fill right here good so that's if you drag left click and drag and according to the documentation if you don't hold alt it's supposed to fill in the stroke as well and if you do hold alt then um it only fill does the fill area it leaves the stroke alone mm. you know but we kind of get varied results with the paint bucket tool in that respect so coming back to the tool but tool control box we look at some of the options we have visible colors now this will fill this preset says that we should fill the areas relating to the pixels that are available in, in bounding pixels that are available of all visible colors so if there's any visible color that's in the image that's behind the cursor we're going to fill based on that visible color so right now we have black which is a visible color we're going to fill based on this visible color good behind it we have white which is a visible color we're going to fill the area based on the visible color now we don't have to use you know the visible color to do this what we can also use is that we can also use the red channel the green channel the blue channel the hue channel the saturation lightness and alpha channel to determine how we fill it in so we're going to look at the blue red and green channel and see how this operates so right now we want it to fill only by the red channel so if we go to this red channel here we can see that it's filling in the area based on the different red channels good now if we take this to a blue channel and attempt it it fills in the whole area and that's simply because it can't find any red in the channel so it just fills in the whole area 
and we do for the green same thing now if we go up here it will find some red and it will fill in based on the red channel now if we test green we should see the same thing but for green so let's see the green channel right we're seeing that it's filling it in I can use a different color for now um, to fill it in right so we're using red now and we can see that it's filling in with red we're gonna look in the blue channel see if it finds any green it doesn't find any green in the blue channel so the whole thing is colored and we try the red and the same thing the whole thing is colored but in the original image it does find green channels and it, we do so for the blue fills in the blue channels it doesn't find any blue in the red channel and so it just fills in the whole box doesn't find any red in the blue in the green channel blue in the green channel so it just fills in the whole box and if you check the original picture it does find blue channels in the original picture so that's how we fill in by channels and the same goes for hue saturation lightness and alpha so you can fill in um, using the bucket tool and area based on those different channels if you wish now where i see that would be beneficial is if you're doing it for some scientific means and you want to show how the different channels you know operate you can fill them in with the bucket tool um, that would be a good use case scenario for this so moving back to the bucket tool next week we talk about the threshold and the threshold here is talks about the maximum difference between click pixels and a neighboring pixel to be counted in the fill so the higher the threshold you know the bigger the difference is allowed you know in the algorithm to determine whether or not this thing can be filled or not so a higher threshold gives you a less accurate result based on the colors that are under the paint tool paint bucket tool a lower threshold gives you more accurate results based on um, the color that is underneath there so because the threshold is low it's relatively 10 15 we get very accurate results because it's expecting that the colors should have a strong differential between them good but as we increase the threshold you know it will begin to filling several areas despite right this is a good op way to look at it despite the differences between the colors it will fill in more than one area you know it it's begins to ignore more and more how the um the difference between colors and just begins to fill in you know less accurately so i'm not sure why you would want to for it to be less accurate so i typically would keep this at a lower level so that we can get the sort of you know areas that we're looking for that would be what i would suggest right but the threshold controls the accuracy of of the trace based on the colors underneath the cursor good and then we can move on to grow and shrink and growing and shrinking this in this tool is great because um when you have a, a situation now where you know you trace and you're ready to use the paint bucket tool and you fill in the paint bucket tool but you realize that the paint bucket tool has this line around it and it doesn't completely fill it the way you want to or you may zoom in and say all right i've got a more accurate trace but it still doesn't fill it in exactly because we still see this white line we can grow you know we can set the grow factor to increase by a little bit more and we're just using um, the growth factor of 0 0.5 now and fill it in and what this does is that it finds the accurate it finds you still uses the algorithm and pixel density to determine you know where the bounding edges are but on top of that whatever it finds it grows the whole vector um, by 0 0.5% so, and that will help to fill in the white space you know that you wouldn't be normally be able to fill in using the algorithms um, inefficiency so basically the growth and the shrink is to account for the, um, the inefficiency in the algorithms calculation to fill in a whole area without leaving white space 
So you can put the growth up to fill in the extra white space that the algorithm was unable to pick up. All right, lastly, we can look at close gaps. So for this um, tutorial, we're gonna get this picture here. I'm just going to um, hit Control, hit Shift Alt B. Excuse me, Shift Alt B, and we're gonna update this and just trace this picture quickly. And then I'm going to just cut this area right here. Good, so right now there's a gap here. And if we zoom out, the gap is smaller based on the pixel count. So maybe if we use the bucket tool and fill this in, it will be able to determine that this is a very small gap and still fill in this area. And we're unable to, let's zoom out a bit more. Oh, this is a different color. Whoops, zoom it out a bit more. Right, and we just, let me see. Zoom it out a tiny bit more. Seem to detect the area. Let me just try this again. Let's reset this. All right. Okay, so it can fill this because this is filled up, but because there's a gap, it can't quite fill in the middle. But if we zoom out now, we can see that it can. Um, safely understand that this is uh, a small gap and it still is able to fill it in but if we zoom in the pixel count the gap gets larger and it becomes difficult for this to fill in so what we can do to aid it is that we can say um, identify gaps that are of medium height or medium size and this will aid the paint tool to be able to fill in the area of the um enclosing shape that has the gap a bit better because it knows that there may be a small gap so it can detect the small gap and fill it in or it can detect a medium gap and fill it in or it can detect a larger gap and fill it in now it's unfortunate that this is um recorded by small medium and large because it's very difficult to tell um to for you to um visualize how large or how small um, a gap it can fill in it's just gonna be trial and error for you so you have to keep that in mind but you can use this to help to fill in the gaps to help to fill in the area despite having a gap in the image underneath the cursor you know once you have an understanding of it but the best way to do it is like to zoom out and the gap becomes smaller pixel wise because we can if you're looking at the sunflower at this distance it almost seems like there's not a gap and that's the same viewpoint that the algorithm has and so it's easier for it to fill up so this concludes the paint bucket tool if you enjoyed this tutorial please give it a thumbs up if you have more information to give on this tool i'd appreciate it. you can leave it in the comments um, have any questions you can leave it in the comments move on to the next tutorial but until we see each other again get up and design a new door later